nice life once everything around us becomes automated. AI is one of the hottest topics in computing today and represents an opportunity to create spectacular new services and products across nearly every industry in the market. But just as with all new trends that come into the IT community, there's a lot of questions and a lot of uncertainty and a lot of vendor performance washing that's going on as people try to wrestle down how to build sensible AI infrastructure. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what the real priorities are for building out large-scale machine learning and deep learning environments. I'm Jeff Denworth. I'm the CMO and co-founder of Vast Data. I want to thank you for taking a little bit of your time today to learn about the actual mechanics around building storage for artificial intelligence environments. Okay, so let's start a little bit with kind of some basic principles. There's a, a few market dynamics in play that I think actually inform how people think about um, the different types of solutions that are appropriate for AI. And so I think the, the one thing that can be said is there's a lot of different places where AI is happening in research centers, uh, as well as in you know, large scale enterprises and internet companies. And there's one axiom that I see kind of playing out over and over again, which is pretty much every HPC center is trying to become an AI center, but not every AI center is trying to become an H. Oops, is trying to become an HPC center, and so what you have is a, a lack of equivalence here. Now, <clears throat> these HPC centers that have existed for the longest time, they've been working with GPUs and AI processors for years. Uh, even before AI was a thing, they were using. GPUs as accelerators for their compute workloads. And they've been working with high performance networking that you will commonly find in AI environments, solutions such as InfiniBand networking that provides RDMA access across large clusters of servers and storage. And so one of the things that's happening is the line is getting pretty blurry from a practitioner perspective of who's an HPC professional, who's an AI professional. And the interesting thing is that people that have deep experience with scalable storage often in this case come down to people that have been building parallel file systems and distributed storage systems for a long time. And so there's a few key considerations. One is scale. Can storage infrastructure scale to meet the needs of large scale deep learning workloads, large scale machine learning workloads, and be exposed across hundreds or even thousands of machines that are being used for training and inference purposes? Number two is acceleration. And here, going up to the, the server or the client or the GPU, what you have is a need for some very HPC-centric technologies that historically haven't been well used in the enterprise environment. So these are things like RDMA, which it gets extended by organizations like NVIDIA to bring GPU um, I.O. all the way up to the, the, the GPU bypassing memory in a capability called GPU direct storage. Um, and then on top of it, what's becoming clear is that these workloads require flash. Flash infrastructure is important for reasons that a lot of the reads that happen down the storage, in particular for training purposes, are done very randomly. And oftentimes these are done at a segment of data that would be really not suitable for hard drive based I.O. Imagine an average request size of a little bit less than 100 kilobytes or so. If you executed that on a standard, um, standard enterprise hard drive, you get maybe like 10 megabytes a second or a small fraction of the peak performance that that drive is capable of. But the nature of the random reads that happen from machine learning codes make it basically impossible to get full performance from mechanical storage media. So the market's largely concluded that you need flash. Now, on one side of this equation, you have parallel file systems. Uh, and these are solutions like Lustre or IBM Spectrum Scale and other technologies. And the other side, you have NAS. And here, um, you have a variety of, of interface options, both NFS, and S3, uh, S3 becoming increasingly popular for machine learning workloads. And so customers have a choice between these as they start to think about how to build their Python-based workflows and other machine learning and deep learning workflows on top of large-scale data stores. And so the question becomes, well, what do they actually need and, and how do these technologies support that requirement? And I think at the end of the day, 
what's becoming clear is that the market historically has been trained to think that they cannot use NAS. And we think we figured out why. <clears throat> so if you think about a conventional scale out NAS system, a lot of technologies that have been in the market for many years, um, they all borrow from this concept called shared nothing. It's a concept that was invented by Google by the introduction of the Google file system many years ago. And what you have is a bunch of commodity servers that all work together and they have hard drives and SSDs that are directly attached to them. And so the thinking is, well, if it's flash, that's good enough. The thinking is, if I can get RDMA out of those servers all the way up to the host, that's good enough. But the problem becomes the way that these servers work together. And so inherent to the servers, what you have is a cache, as well as things like locks that, um, cache and locks, cache and locks, cache and locks, cache and locks, that are all kind of organized in memory space across these nodes. And as there's um, either random or parallel I.O. that happens down into these nodes from a number of AI processors, then over the back end of these systems, what happens is that they all need to stay interconnected in, and coordinate with each other. And ultimately, the amount of back end traffic starts to grow at a greater level than the front end traffic does as you start to grow your clusters larger and larger. And so what happens is, from a performance perspective, you have a law of diminishing returns that kicks in with this shared nothing architecture when dealing with AI workloads. Now on top of that, a lot of these systems were originally designed for hard drive based IO. And as you think about flash, there's a number of companies out in the marketplace that are trying to promote a tiered storage architecture. So you have, let's say some, some hard drives and some SSDs that all work together in a common architecture. Now, hard drives are great uh, from a cost perspective. They're really, really poor from a performance perspective especially when dealing with small and random I.O. And the challenge becomes, how do you um, build a system that is understanding of a deep learning workflow or a, a, a machine learning pipeline such that you can avoid the pitfalls of mechanical media-based I.O. as you're just kind of being exposed to these applications. And the fallacy here is that you can just build some magical storage system that will tier your data and always have the data that you need in flash or in cache whenever you need it. But the reality is that you cannot prefetch a random I.O. And so prefetching is the way that you move data up to a more accelerated media. And without that, what happens is that every I.O. becomes a random I.O. And if most of your capacity is hard drive based, that means most of your I.O. requests will go to a storage media that's something like 100 times slower than a flash drive. And so <clears throat> we've now observed a lot of large scale organizations that work with you know, big resources and a lot of infrastructure, they've come to the conclusion that storage tiering just doesn't work in the era of artificial intelligence, and there are new solutions required. And so that's where vast data comes in. What we've done is we've, um, we've, we've kind of shown the world that through the lens of a number of new technology innovations that have come into the market, it's possible for the first time in 20 years to build a new type of systems architecture. We call it DAYS. And the day's architecture consists of a number of stateless Docker containers that are all exporting our namespace over NFS um, with support for RDMA, with support for GPU Direct. And it's a multi-protocol system that you can also access your data via S3 or even, um, even SMB. And so these servers are one part global flash controller, one part global file server, all sitting uh, in a common Linux container, and each server accesses on the back end an NVMe over Fabrics connected collection of storage enclosures that are just holding NVMe SSDs. And so we call this architecture disaggregated and shared everything. Disaggregated because each of the vast containers can, is decoupled from the underlying state of the system, but shared everything in that each additional container can access any part of the namespace without having to coordinate with any other container within the system. And so what you have here is an embarrassingly parallel architecture that we call DAYS. Um, and essentially, we believe that it's highly appropriate for scale-out applications, including machine learning, deep learning, inference, and training environments, because every single CPU we add is a linear unit of performance scaling. There is no law of diminishing return as you add additional CPUs. Underneath the system, we've solved for the cost of flash problem by implementing a number of new efficiency algorithms that weren't possible without this day's architecture. 
algorithms that make it possible to field low cost flash drives for up to 10 years, algorithms that get the total cost for data protection overhead or rate overhead down to under 3%. So you just get so much more free space from your flash investment. And finally, algorithms that are designed to find correlations across data and reduce data far more efficiently than conventional data deduplication systems would work, such that as opposed to um, conventional storage systems where you would expect to play, pay an exorbitant premium for all flash infrastructure, our costs are more equivalent to what you would spend for hard drive-based infrastructure. So we call this concept universal storage because we're completely blurring the lines between different tiers of infrastructure and building a system that is scalable enough for your fastest applications, performant enough for your fastest applications, but affordable enough such that you no longer have to toil with or worry about storage tiering. And because of the fact that we work with NVIDIA to give you acceleration all the way up to your AI processors, because we also work with other AI processors that equally enjoy RDMA connectivity all the way up to their memory space, what comes of this is a system that is just suitable enough for all of your AI agenda, scalable enough such that you don't need to worry about anything else, and far simpler than a parallel file system-based approach where you have to worry about the complexity of infrastructure and the complexity of deploying a file system client driver on every one of your compute nodes that starts to confuse your storage management agenda with your operating system management agenda. So we'd welcome you to learn more about our approach to accelerating artificial intelligence and enabling the next 10 to 20 years of AI training and in inference. You can visit us at www.vastdata.com to learn more, read our white paper, or just click on the chat icon and start a conversation with us today. Thank you so much.